The heart of rivalries in America has been beating loudest in the adjoining states of Texas and Oklahoma. The Lone Star State is a territory that has always been protected. Cowboy traditions will never die. The soul of Texas can be found in its oil fields. And its Longhorns are a symbol of football tradition at the University of Texas. Oklahoma is a land of harvest. Indians inhabited much of the state until settlers called the Boomers and the Sooners set off a series of land runs which opened the state to settlement. Oil wells still dot the landscape and help fuel the economy. And the Red River serves as the southern border, where the Texas state line lurks as the dividing mark for these neighbors of Southwest America. Every year, Oklahoma sends its college football team across that border to meet Texas on the gridiron, where the two teams have staged intense battles since the year 1900 in one of the nation's fiercest rivalries. Texas um, came out last year and at the end of the game won the game. That's a frustrating feeling, so we're going back ranked high. We want to go out and show, you know, the country that we're back. There isn't too much better than beating Oklahoma, you know. It's, it's a war, it's a fight. It's like you go in the back alley and you beat up the guy, you know, you walk out the alley with your hands up. Since 1929, the back alley has been the city of Dallas. It's here, amongst the Texas State Fair celebration, where more than 75,000 fans gather to witness the war. Oklahoma and Texas will settle the score before a packed house inside the Cotton Bowl. inside the big old cotton bowl to the sights and sounds of one of college football's greatest rivalries. Texas and Oklahoma. They're meeting for the 85th time. Since 1929, they've played here in Dallas. Since 1937, they've met here at the Cotton Bowl. Mike, this is truly a special rivalry. It is a special rivalry, Sean. And I'll tell you, I refer to it as an alumni game. As a head coach, you've got to win this football game more times than you lose it. David McWilliams has won it once. Gary Gibbs has not won this game yet. This is a special rivalry because it's two states against each other. It's two conferences against each other. It's two cities and campuses against each other. The other thing that's important is five times Oklahoma has played Oklahoma State and then came back and played Texas. Texas has won all five of those meetings. Don't sell Texas short. They're an underdog in this ball game. They very well could win this football game. And Oklahoma did indeed play Oklahoma State last week. Down the sidelines this afternoon, we are joined by our colleague, Kevin Kiley. Thank you, Sean. Just a little bit about the Cotton Bowl. We're in Dallas, 200 miles to the north, Norman, Oklahoma, 200 miles to the south. Austin, Texas, the Cotton Bowl seats 75,000 people, and the seats are only eight paces from the field. I paced it off myself, and that means 75,000 of the most rabid, enthusiastic fans you'll ever see will be heard this afternoon. It's frightening, it's a little bit exciting, but there's really no place like it in college football. Back upstairs. 
David McWilliams trying to bring Texas back to national prominence in college football. The Sooners trying to remain unbeaten in 1990. We'll have the opening kickoff after this. ESPN's presentation of college football, Texas at Oklahoma, is brought to you by High Performance Compact Personal Computers. Compact, it simply works better. And by Liberty Mutual. For your insurance and financial service needs, America believes in Liberty Mutual. The largest Ferris wheel in the world. Just one of the highlights of the Texas State Fair. And the centerpiece of the fairgrounds of the state of Texas, the Cotton Bowl. Kevin kindly told you, half of the Cotton Bowl filled with Oklahoma supporters, the other half occupied by the Rooters from Texas. Coach Gary Gibbs, the youthful-looking 38-year-old head coach in his second season as head man at Oklahoma. 12 and 4 overall, 5 and 0 this year, and ranked number 4 in the nation. Texas won the toss and deferred. It's the first time Oklahoma has lost the toss this year. The kickoff from Mike Pollock goes out of the end zone, and Oklahoma gets it first and 10 at its own 20-yard line. Steve Collins leads the Sears diehard starting lineup for Oklahoma. He's a sophomore. The running backs, Ike Lewis and Mike McKinley. McKinley the fullback, Lewis the tailback. The wide receivers, Arthur Guess and Ted Long. Steve Collins. He starts at quarterback. It's likely that we will see the freshman Cale Gundy as well. A delay to Ike Lewis. Plenty of running room. And a gain of eight. Brian Lewis brought him down, number 60, with help from Stanley Richard, number 18. The rest of the Oklahoma Sooners on offense. The tight end is Adrian Cooper, a senior. Randy Wallace is the center of the offensive line. The guards, Sawatsky and Medice. The tackles, Miller and Houston. Lewis picked up eight on the first play from Simmons. He gets the call again on second and two and appears to have the first down as he split across the 30. For the Texas Longhorns on defense, their Sears diehard starting lineup. we'll get to in a moment. But as you can see from the spot of the football, Ike Lewis did not pick up the first down. They spotted him down just shy of the 30. Oklahoma will either give the ball to pull back here, a quarterback sneak and try to pick the first down up. That's indeed what they go to. And Collins has the first down out to the 33-yard line. Now the Texas Longhorns, we promise you. Shane Dronette and Oscar Giles, the defensive ends. The tackles, James Patton and Tommy Jeter. The middle linebacker is number 60, Brian Jones, a legendary number at Texas. We'll tell you more about that later. Boone Powell and Anthony Curl, the outside linebacker. The corners, Mark Berry and Grady Kappas. And the safeties, Lance Gunn and Stanley Richard. And Mike, that secondary plays a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. They do, and they're strong in the secondary. They'll make a lot of plays tackling on the option. On first down, Lewis. Lost the football. The Longhorns have it at the 41-yard line. James Patton, number 92, came up with the football. See here on the option, they forced the pitch. Number 99, Tommy Cheater's going to strip the ball right here on the hit by James Patton. And then Texas recovers the ball. Big turnover early in the ball game here. Texas needs to, to move it and take it on in. First and ten Longhorns at the 41 of Oklahoma. Less than two minutes into the football game. A fumble by Lewis and the recovery by Patton. Phil Brown, the freshman, took a heavy hit on the first play from scrimmage for Texas. Texas will show a lot of formations to Oklahoma right now. And their offense is led by sophomore Peter Gardere. 
In the backfield behind him, Chris Samuels and Phil Brown. The wide receivers, Johnny Walker and Keith Cash. And the tight end is Keith Cash's twin brother, Kerry Cash. Todd Smith, the center. The guards, Dwayne Miller and Jeff Boyd. And the tackles, Chuck Johnson and Stan Thomas. No gain on first down, second and ten. Gardeer lost the football, and the Sooners have it back. No contact. Gardeer simply lost it as he backed away from the center, and Proctor Land came up with the fumble recovery for Oklahoma. Some anxious moments here early in the ball game. Both teams turning the ball over, and both teams are not known for turning the football over. Peter Gardier, the quarterback, the ball never got to him. I don't know whether he pulled his hands out too soon or the snap missed his hands. But a very, very cost, costly turnover right here, Sean. Oklahoma, fifth in the nation in turnover ratio. They've given one away and taken one away here in the first two and a half minutes. 12.31 to play in a scoreless first quarter. Collins' first pass incomplete. Flag down on the play, thrown in the offensive backfield. Mike McKinley was the intended receiver. I was, I was telling Sean. Both teams today, Sean, will use two quarterbacks. Kale Gundy will come in and spell Steve Collins. He's more of an eye-passing type quarterback. Steve Collins more of an option quarterback. A walk-off against Oklahoma. Personal foul to call. It's an SEC officials group. And the referee today is Al Ford from Florence, Alabama. I think this is what you'll see more and more in college football. When you have a game of this magnitude, two different conferences, they'll go to another conference for a refereeing crew. Oklahoma's not a big passing team, so first and long yards, what they have to do now is just try to get it gradually back with the option and uh, trying to get the ball to the tailback. This is first down and 32 for the Sooners. The fullback McKinley up the middle through a gaping hole. He has the first down in Texas territory at the 43-yard line. A 38-yard gain for Mike McKinley. As we talked early, watch the trap here. Watch the left guard trapping right here on the defensive end. Mike McKinley breaks through the trap. He has good speed. The thing that Texas has to shut down is that trap, as I said early in the ball game. Lance Gunn made the tackle for Texas. Well, Brewer with the carry. We got a couple to the 40. A gain of two and a half for Brewer, the sophomore from Lawton, Oklahoma. Sean, the player that has to help stop that trap is Brian Jones, the middle linebacker, number 60. The trap play is a play where they influence the offensive lineman on the defensive lineman and make him think he's coming through very free, and then all of a sudden the lineman, offensive lineman from the backside traps him. That's something that Texas has to stop today. Second and eight, no score. We played three and a half minutes. It's been wild already. Brewer. A couple of yards short of a first down. He went out at the 34-yard line. Tackle was made by Stanley Richard. One thing about option teams is they really don't have anybody assigned to block the safety. Uh, Stanley Richard will probably end up this football game as the leading tackler because he's somebody who has to fill both lanes from his free safety spot. He's a veteran, a 50-year senior, and a three-year starter. Third down. Two yards to go for the Oklahoma first down. Brewer again. Did not appear to pick it up. Needed just short of the 32. He went down right at the 33. Well, this is the first call that uh, Gary Gibbs is going to have to make. Looks like he's going for the first down right here. Both teams would like to draw blood first. This is key in a, in a rival football game. Big play in this football game early. Fourth and less than a yard for Steve Collins and the Sooners. Brewer. It'll be close. It will depend on the spot. Sean, Texas didn't go to a short yardage defense here because they're afraid of the option. You can't 
bring everybody inside in a short yardage situation because they do run the option or outside on you. So right here, uh, they just played a normal defense and Oklahoma got the first down. By less than a half yards, the Sooners pick it up. They have first and 10 now at the 32 of Texas. Now you're in a position, Oklahoma, you can do a lot of things. You can play action pass, you can run that trap again with a fullback, or you can try to get outside on the option. You have Otis Taylor in the backfield right now. He's a good receiver. They can shift him out. And they do. That's Taylor in motion. McKinley rambled for 38 yards on his first carry. That time he gets very little. They ran the trap there, Sean, and they closed it. One thing about the trap play, as I said earlier, the person getting trapped must close the running lane, and he did that on that particular play, Shane Dronette. Coach David McWilliams on the sidelines and a part of this Texas-Oklahoma game for the 23rd time. Unbalanced line to the left. McKinley picked up a yard. Tommy Jeter, number 99, the junior from Deer Park, Texas, made the tackle. Texas did not get fooled by the unbalanced line here. Oklahoma put all their line to the left side except to guard the tight end to the right and tried to run the trap. They felt like Texas would move over with it. They did not move their defensive line, so they may come back to go to an unbalanced and run to it the next time. Look for the option here. On third down and nine. The option, Collins, one yard and that's all. And several Longhorns greet him at the 30-yard line. Here's where, Sean, if, if Kale Gundy's in there at the quarterback, they would have probably thrown on that down. But with Steve Collins, he's more of an option quarterback, so they're going to run what he does best. Now they're going to try to get a field goal and, and uh, come, ahead, come ahead with the three-point lead here. The field goal kicker is R.D. Lasher, senior from Plano, Texas. This is a try of 47 yards. It's long enough, and it's good. With room to spare, R.D. Lasher drives it through from 47, and Oklahoma is on the board first. 3-0 Sooners will return to the Cotton Bowl in just a moment. Presentation of college football, Texas at Oklahoma, is brought to you by Volvo, the car that's famous for its safety, durability, and longevity. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. You had a look a moment ago at cutting horses, part of the State Fair of Texas. In this kickoff, there's a lot of speed on this field right now. And uh, both special teams have to play even. Uh, neither team would want the other team to get an edge on here, but there's so much speed. Uh, special teams could become a factor in this ball game. Long runs. Texas, when they get the ball, I look for them to throw on first down, Sean. They're, they're a first down throwing team. Very short passes underneath trying to work against the linebackers, then running on second down and trying to set up a third and short yardage situation. Both teams look jittery here in the early going, as you might expect. I think they are, and they'll settle down now, and uh, we're going to see a great football game. Brad Riddell, the punter, handles the kicking off. And it's down by Chris Samuels, four yards deep in the end zone. An interesting scoring drive for the Oklahoma Sooners. It covered just 28 yards. They backed up all the way to their 20 as a result of the personal foul penalty. Big 38-yard run by Mike McKinley, the key. And last year's field goal makes him seven for nine in that area this year. As a coach, you'd like to see your team answer the score. Uh, a lot of times when a team scores, you want to come right back and answer it. And this is an important drive early for Texas. Peter Gardair, the sophomore, his father played football at Texas. He's running for his life at the moment. Has a hole and has six yards. They'll spot him down at the 25 for a gain of five. Good scrambling by Peter Gardere. That was a counter pass, and it wasn't open. And Peter Gardere did the right thing. Rather than force the ball in, he's a good enough runner that he can pick up some yards. Their second-team quarterback, Jimmy Saxton, who I believe we'll see today, is also a quarterback with good speed and is more of an option quarterback. So both teams have a couple different quarterbacks that they can use. Watch Chris Samuels right here on a pass. Looks for Samuels and has it. 
Chris Samuels. Still on his feet in Oklahoma Territory and down at the 40. Nice run by Samuels and a nice call, Coach. Well, as, as you look at this, Oklahoma is running a two-deep coverage, which means they're going to roll a corner up on the wide receiver. There's room between the linebacker and corner. They're going to work Chris Samuels there all day. Here's the replay, and you see Peter Gardier with a good throw. The linebacker made a good effort. Chris Samuels with a good play. First and ten, Texas. The Longhorns trail three to nothing. The freshman Brown works to the 36-yard line. And now a flag comes in as there was some pushing and shoving after the play. And it looks like Oklahoma is going to be penalized for a late hit. Oklahoma's now had two penalties, two personal foul penalties. And you get in this situation, I know Gary Gibbs probably talked to him about it in the ball game. You know a lot of these players. Most of these players are from Texas. the play is over and here is the extracurricular activity and there's the shot to the back of the head delivered by Chris Wilson the junior coach Gary Gibbs says Wilson has been his best defensive player this year they see that in the hollow field Douglas fight but not here here it costs you 15 and gives Texas a first down at the 21 the quick hitter Johnny Walker inside the 10 with a first down at the eight yard line first catch for Johnny Walker the senior from San Antonio Texas ran three receivers to the right side and ran the quick slant to Johnny Walker on the on the left side. He's got such speed that he could break that kind of play. Terry Ray brought him down after a gain of 13. Phil Brown. What a hit from Wilson, but he kept his balance. And now he's swarmed under by three defenders, led by number 19, Terry Ray. Wow. Great balance right there. Jason Belcher come up and made a great hit on Phil Brown, but he kept his feet spun, headed for the goal line. Watch Phil Brown right here. Good blocking. He leads right up the field. Gets hit by Chris Wilson, spins out, but it's a great pursuit. Oklahoma always has had great speed, great pursuit. Texas has had big time difficulty inside the 20 this year. 15 times they've been inside, only five touchdowns. Gardier running again, and not very far. He's down at the eight-yard line in the arms of Proctor Land. Land, a last-minute starter at nose guard. He's been used primarily as a backup defensive tackle. But Stacy Dillard, normally the starting nose guard, is out with turf toe, so Land got the start, and he's already recovered a fumble. See, the one thing about Texas, when you have a problem inside the red zone, they've had 10 field goals that they've kicked in this situation on the field, four of 19 on third or six and more. Peter Gardier's the person that's got to make it happen right here. Coaches say he's been solid, but he has not made the big play when they've needed it. Trying to make it now to the end zone. What a catch! Touchdown, Texas! Terry Cat. That's the Pollock to try the extra point. And Texas has a 7-3 lead. Let's take another look at this. Kerry Cash, a tight end who's 6'4 and 238. They isolated him out here with a cornerback. Look at that catch. When you're 6'4, that's a basketball play against Darnell Walker. Just an excellent job of going up for the football and bringing it down. The Longhorns lead 7-3, and we'll be right David McWilliams, under fire in Austin. A win today would certainly help him keep his job, which he is fighting to keep. 7-3 the score. Touchdown, Gardner to Cash. 
capping an impressive drive as they answered the field goal very quickly. They had to answer the score. There's Kerry Cash right there. He's a great catch. He answered the score. And David McWilliams, this could be a game that could get him over the hump, get him over the hurdle right here. He's a fine football coach. He's got an excellent staff. Michael Pollock kicks off. Joel Brewer brings it back. Only the 11. Big play on special teams by Bubba Jacks, number 25. The scoring drive, seven plays and 80 yards. It took just 315. Capped by the touchdown reception, the beauty with one hand by Kerry Cash. And on the drive, Peter Gardere was three for three passing for 54 yards. Oklahoma's averaging 40 points a game, so there goes the unbalanced line again to the left side. Look for him to go that way this time. On first down, a gain of just a couple. Williams was the ball carrier. From behind the defense, they went away from the unbalanced line again. Good job, but watch the pursuit. Again, the safeties. An excellent play by the Texas defense on people going to the football. Mark Berry made the tackle. Six foot, 192 junior. On second and nine. The fullback, Kenyon Rashid, sophomore from Kansas City. He made his way out to the 16. Still long yardage coming up for Oklahoma on third down, particularly as you pointed out earlier with Collins in the game. That's not a good thing. Here's the trap again. Watch Oscar Giles close that trap. And that's what you have to do. That's how you have to play that. I'm sure Texas worked all week on that particular play. Now I think they've got to come back again with the option. They line up in the formation from which they've run the option. Collins thrown down by Stanley Richards short of the first down. Sean Stanley Richards is an outstanding football player. He's the person, as I said early in the game, he's going to make a lot of tackles. He stopped this play from his free safety spot. Watch him. He's coming all the way up the line of scrimmage. The boys, the block right there, comes in, makes the play on the quarterback. Brad Riddell to punt. He's a sophomore from Bedford, Texas. They may go after this punt. Texas has 10 men up on the line of scrimmage. Flag down of the play. Brady Kavnis, the return man. He skips out of bounds and is taken down there along the Texas sideline. The 41-yard punt and a six-yard return, but it all might be tonight as a result of the penalty. If that was offsides on Texas, now that could give Oklahoma first down. It's on Oklahoma, so I'm sure Texas will just refuse it. If they do refuse it, they'll have it first and ten at their own 47-yard line. that real good field position right now. They should turn this one down and let the offense come on. That's what David McWilliams was saying. He was pointing to the spot of the football, saying we'll take it right there. With the score, Texas 7 and Oklahoma 3. 301 to play in the first quarter, and we'll be right. One of America's thriving cities, Dallas, Texas, provides the backdrop for this battle between Texas and Oklahoma. Longhorns with a four-point lead and with the ball at their own 47. Bill Brown in trouble and down for a loss. Mike, your keys to the football game. I think for Oklahoma, they have to establish the fullback and get some big plays, either off the option or a play-action pass. And Texas has to counter by not allowing that. For Texas, yards after reception. They're a ball-control passing game. It's, uh, it's very important that once they catch the ball, like Chris Samuels did, that he gets yards after it. And then establish the run. Field position and turnovers are going to be very important in this game. As they have been already. The option from Texas, and the ball is loose at the 40. But it went out of bounds before the Sooners could recover. Joe Bowden, number 45, had a great shot at it as it was rolling free along the 40-yard line, but he couldn't scoop it up before it crossed the sideline. One benefit as a coach 
of having an open date is you can put some new things in, new wrinkles, and they put a counter option play in here. Peter Gardier reverses out, and the guard pulls, but his, his pitch is just too hard, and it was at the head of Phil Brown. So that's a quarterback's fall right there. It's going to be a little soft. Jimmy Sachs to the backup quarterback is more of an option quarterback, and we were told we could see him very early in the game. Gardier over the middle too high. That wasn't a very good series right there for Texas. Oklahoma did a nice job on defense right there. One of the best punters in the country, Alex Waits. Averaging nearly 45 yards per kick. Flags fly, they hit Waits. Otis Taylor, the return man, down at the 16-yard line. The flags went flying as there was contact with Alex Waits, the punter. But it's holding. Waits was brushed. I would have been amazed if that's what the call was. I think it was beaten. The uh, Texas left wing was beaten, and so he held on. The Oklahoma player, they came very close to blocking that, so that's something we want to log because... If you come close early in a ball game like that, you're going to come back to it. And one of the problems this year for Texas has been kick coverage, particularly kickoff coverage, but also punt coverage. Pulling by the offense on the play, 10-yard penalty, repeating fourth down. When you have a long yardage situation like this, turn them loose and go try to block it. David McWilliams looking at fourth down in half the state of Texas. <laughs> So Waits will try again. Low snap, now he's running. He'll kick it, close to the line of scrimmage. Taylor came running up, and look at this. It went all the way into the end zone. The Longhorns couldn't cover it fast enough. Waits scrambled, kicked it from almost the line of scrimmage. And Texas had a great chance to down it inside the five, but it just did dribble across the goal line, a 70-yard punt. As you see here, he drops the snap. Collins comes in and forces him to run. Alex Waits did a great move right here of kicking the football. He's very fortunate he's left-footed, going to the left side right there. If he's a right-footed kicker, he never got that off. The Sooners with the ball with a minute 56 left in the first quarter. Oklahoma trails Texas 7-3. Steve Collins still a quarterback. This might be a play-action type situation right here. The unbalanced line again. Collins dumps it off. And a catch made by Williams for a gain of six out to the 26. Here's Tim. Sean, TCU has beaten Rice today 38-28. to They've won five straight. They're 3-0 for the first time in the Southwest Conference since 1958. A lot of green jackets at your game want to see Texas win because Houston's ineligible. TCU in the Cotton Bowl would not sit well with the networks or with the Cotton Bowl committee. Let's get back to you guys. It would fit well with Jim Wacker and a lot of people at Fort Worth. Oh, what a great... Surprising scores for Texas this year. The freshman Williams again has the first down. Ernest Williams hasn't played much this year. He's from Aurora, Colorado. He's had three carries here this afternoon. Oscar Giles made Steve Collins pay for that option. They're going to turn Oscar Giles loose right from the top. Watch. Collins comes down. Look at that hit right here. The one thing that happens when you start running the option, you, you open up the trap, you open up the option. That's why on first down they threw the play action pass. You have to have it all going. Now the trap will open up a little bit more for him. First and 10 from the 32. This time the fullback, Rashid, picked up a yard and that's all. We're inside of a minute to play now in the first quarter. Oklahoma has two big fullbacks in McKinley and Rashid. Texas, on the other hand, really doesn't have a fullback. They're playing with two tailbacks in the offense. Kind of interesting how one team has two real strong fullbacks, the other team can't find one. Gain of just a couple of inches officially at second and ten. Williams 
Great tackle in the open field. Again, it's Stanley Richard, the senior from Hawkins, Texas, having a big day already. Guess, guess who makes the tackle? If you watch the replay right here, watch Stanley Richard. He's coming up on the option to make the play on the quarterback. They're taking a the pitch away with the cornerback. The one thing that you've got to watch now if you're Texas is that post pattern behind Stanley Richard. As much as he's being active right now, look out for that post. End of one quarter at the Cotton Bowl. It's the Longhorn seven and the Sooners three. Sean McDonough with Mike Gottfried and Kevin Kiley back at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. After one quarter, Texas has a 7-3 lead. And Oklahoma, as the second quarter begins, is facing third down and eight from its own 35-yard line. The option. Williams. Short of the first down. Again, Stanley Richard up from his safety spot to make the tackle at the 40 two yards short of a first down. Let's check in at the sideline now with Kevin Kiley. Thank you, Sean. As you can see, Texas using that cornerback to stop the option of Oklahoma, but the Sooners do have an alternative. On the bench, freshman quarterback Cal Gundy, the brother of Mike Gundy from Oklahoma State, the all-time Big 8 leader in uh, total offense. Cal Gundy, the most sought Gundy, the most sought after high school recruit ever in the state of Oklahoma from Midwest City. Last week he threw a 52-yard touchdown pass. He could throw the ball and Oklahoma is expected to go to him later in the game. Back up to you. And Riddell Hunt just did bounce across the goal line into the end zone. UT gets it at the 20-yard line. Sean, I look for Cale Gundy to come in the ball game real soon. Nothing that Steve Collins is doing wrong. You just want to change your uh, philosophy a little bit, start throwing the ball a little bit more on first down. What they did on the last play, they put a back in the backfield to try to block Stanley Richard, but he can't get to him. He's too quick to get to Stanley to block him on the option. Now, he, now Texas has to answer with throwing the ball on first down. Longhorns lead, 7-3. Gardere on first and 10. Complete to Stephen Clark. A five-yard gain. He's wrapped up immediately by Joe Bowden. Peter Gardier is looking for Chris Samuels. He's his first read. His second read is to go over the middle to Stephen Clark. And again, it's a five-yard pass, but it's just like a run. It's a very safe throw. Second and five. Brown, the redshirt freshman, picks up two. Offensive coordinator Lynn Amity of Texas has coached three first-round draft picks in the NFL as running backs, including Emmett Smith, and he compares Phil Brown to Emmett Smith. Thinks he has a chance to be a great player. Well, Phil Brown's a good, good running back. Right now, Texas has nine yards rushing, and uh, if they're going to win this football game, if they're going to continue to ball control and field position, they have to get something going on the ground. Oklahoma is over 90 yards rushing right now. Third down and three. Right there, nearly intercepted. Jason Belzer got his hands on it, but couldn't bring it in. Good defensive stand by Oklahoma again. Texas must run the football a little bit better than they are right now. Play action pass where Peter Gardier is going to fake. He's trying to hit Kerry Cash in the seam, but he just didn't get the ball up high enough. Good play again by Jason Belson. Alex waits a high punt into a bit of a breeze, and Otis Taylor makes the catch at the 35 yard line. Longhorns by four. We're coming right back. ESPN's presentation of college football, Texas at Oklahoma, is brought to you by Jeep. There's only one Jeep. And by Thrifty Car Rental, because it's your money. Call 1-800-4-CARS or your travel consultant. The Ferris wheel takes you on a spin. It gives you a nice view of the Cotton Bowl. Roller coaster ride for these coaches, though. Mike McKinley, the fullback. Eight yards on first down for Oklahoma. We're down to 13-10 remaining in the second quarter, and Texas leads 
that's a little veer give right there where you're blocking down two line, two offensive linemen on the linebacker in the middle guard and just letting the fullback run as close to that block as he can. You're leaving the defensive end unblocked. Steve Collins won the starting job after five spring in 89. Mike Lewis has the first down. He's tripped up just short of the 50-yard line. Here's Tim Brando. Sean, things are going well in Washington, thank you. Mark Brunel, the left-handed quarterback, will have a busted play. You can see, obviously, the, the line is blocking in the wrong direction, and he has no receiver to go to, and he gets a five-yard touchdown against the quack attack. Bill Musgrave having all kinds of difficulty early on. Washington looking for a Rose Bowl possibility, Sean and Mike. Indeed they are. Safe in the end zone is the quarterback. With the hook slide. McKinley again crosses midfield. He has four to the 48 of Texas. Mike McKinley, one of many starters for Oklahoma from the state of Texas. He's from Perryton, Texas. Ten of the 22 starters this afternoon for OU are natives of the state of Texas. This is an outstanding uh, high school football area here. Texas high school coaches do such a great job in their clinics are the best attended clinics around, and the high school coaching here is outstanding. Barry Switzer in his book that has just come out. Talks about one of the key success recruiting in Texas. That pass unsuccessful as Collins was looking for Ted Long. The recruiting wars in these two fight battles annually for players in this part of the country. 86 of Texas's players are from the state of Texas, while only one hails from Oklahoma. Meanwhile, OU, a regular Raider of Texas with plenty of talent. Well, people like to say you win the recruiting battle when you win the game. I didn't always find that that way in coaching. Sometimes when, you, when you're rebuilding a program, you have a better chance of recruiting sometimes. But both these teams are going to recruit here as well everybody else across the country. Steve Collins calls for timeout. Texas leads 7-3. 11.43 to play in the second quarter. Oklahoma facing third down and five at the Texas 47. OU just one of five on third down to this point. McKinley the fullback. Very close to the first down at the 42. Again, it will depend on where they spot the ball. It looks like he has the first down. And he does. First down, Oklahoma just inside the 42 of Texas. Today's ITT Hartford student of the game is Oklahoma starting left offensive guard Mike Sawatsky. He's a senior from Weatherford, Oklahoma, majoring in business management. He's carrying a 3.6 grade point average. He's been first team academic all big eight, two years running. The pitch bobbled by Lewis, and he's thrown down by Shane Dronette. end zone angle right here that's a counter option James Patton came up and made the play on the quarterback maybe pitched before he was ready to pitch he pitched it behind as Shane Drenette made the tackle one thing again about Oklahoma if they can bloody your nose running the football they're going to do it the whole game they've got 109 yards rushing right now but here's where you put Oklahoma in a disadvantage the passing situation second and 17 back at the 48 yard line Collins to throw again with all day Deep down the middle, and Richard had to go through his fingertip. It was intended for long, but he was surrounded by three Longhorns. Play action pass. Steve Collins just threw it too far. Third down situations, right? They're two out of six, Oklahoma. So this is a key win for him here. We need to do something where they get Steve Collins on the corner a little bit as a run pass threat. Maybe possibly a screen right here too, Sean. This is the seventh play of the Oklahoma Drive. Collins, much too long, looking for Otis Taylor, but that was 10 yards over his head. And the OU fans are starting to grow restless with Steve Collins, who was replaced before halftime last week in Stillwater by the talented freshman, Cale Gundy. 
Well, he is pacing the sideline now. Well, Steve Collins is playing well. It's just when you get in long yardage situations, he's in, he's in a little bit of trouble because he's not as accurate a thrower as Kale Gundy. Brad Riddell the punt. Brady Kavnis is waiting for it. Oklahoma with a chance to down it. And they do. It'll be marked back around the seven yard line near where the Sooners first touched the football. It's a key game in the hunt for the SEC title tonight when the Florida Gators try to stop Tennessee. Like Coach Steve Furrier has really turned Florida around. All the way up to number nine in the polls this week. Tennessee number five. That's a big ball game. Florida's just like Oklahoma. They can't go to a bowl game, so every week's a bowl game for them. Steve Furrier's probably told his team that. Barry Gibbs told his team that. Here's something in this, where the ball's at right here. If I was Texas, let me air it out right here. Try to get the ball to Johnny Walker deep. Texas leads 7 to 3, 10 10 to play in the first half. Brown nearly collided with Gardeer as he took the handoff. Then he did indeed collide with Tom Backus, number 85, the senior from El Paso, Texas. I don't think Texas is going to be able to run the ball out of here. I think they've got to throw the football. It's a sprint draw play, and there was almost a collision with the fullback. Too much penetration. Tom Backus is up the field. The Oklahoma defensive line is taking gaps on the Texas offensive line right now. Getting too much penetration. On second and 12, the delay again to Brown. He's down at the 14-yard line. Still nearly five yards shy of a first down. Just a delayed draw right here where Phil Brown was working as much as he could to try to find a seam. This is a passing down for Texas right here on third and four. The little option, maybe try to get Kerry Cash over the ball. A little tight end route, five-yard route right here to try to get something over the middle. It's a long four for Texas. Gardeer with plenty of time, incomplete. Intended for Kerry Cash, but it was too high. And again, the Sooners forced three plays and punt from Texas. Peter Gardeer here on a quick pass. Trying to get the ball to Chris Samuels. Then he tried to go to Kerry Cash. Good coverage by Joe Bowden right here. Just a little bit too high on the throw. Waits pressured but got it off. And the Horns let it roll to the Oklahoma 42. Last three possessions for Texas. Three plays and out. They still lead 7-3. Gary Danielson are here at the Cotton Bowl this afternoon. They'll have to leave momentarily for tonight's big battle in Tennessee. Gators and balls, and Kale Gundy has come into the football game for Oklahoma. Wouldn't be a bit surprised. They open up lane, throw the ball right off the bat. Quick pass. Collins, the running quarterback, Gundy, a thrower, but he can run the option, as he does on his first play. He gave it to the fullback. A very short gain on the first play from scrimmage for Kale Gundy in this football game. He gave it to Kenyon Rashid, and the gain out to the 44-yard line, just short of three yards. Well, they're fortunate to have two big, strong fullbacks like that to just keep running them at the defensive front of Texas. Oklahoma's been on the field offensively for most of this first half. Gundy is a true freshman, 6'1", 185 pounds from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Duell Brewer out to midfield, a yard and a half short of the Oklahoma first down. Duell was the Big 8 Offensive Freshman of the Year last year when he rushed for 584 yards as a true freshman. Now, if you're Texas defensive coordinator, you have to change your thinking a little bit here now because now it's not the option. It's the passing game and the big fullback and the eye tailback. So Oklahoma will change their game plan a little bit right now, and Texas will have to do the same thing on defense. Brewer. Very close to the first down. The Oklahoma players signaling that they have it. And from the 
the spot of the football appears they do. But Al Ford will follow the chain gang. That's the first down. Let's check into the studio now with Tim Brando. All right, Sean, Robo quarterback, trying to mount a comeback for Southern Cal. Marinovich looking for Gary Wellman, his second TD pass of the game. USC down 16 to 7. Now they've come back to take the lead, 17-16, Sean. Stanford trying for its second upset in as many weeks. Brewer. Quality yardage on first down. He spliced his way to the 42 for a gain of six. Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator of Oklahoma, right now is settling into a game plan of an eye tailback. Uh, you're going to see away from the option. You're going to see more of a power game out of the tailback. And then he'll mix it up with Kill Gundy on a play action pass. But it's very clear right now the way Oklahoma is going to play this game the rest of this quarter. Oklahoma dominating on the ground, but trailing on the scoreboard 7 to 3 with 6.20 to play in the first half. On second and four, the fullback burst through Rashid for the first down. Kenyon Rashid, sophomore from Kansas City, Missouri, rumbled down to the 33 yard line. There's a trap again. Watch the guard trapping right here. Kenyon Rashid right up the football field. Well, you get those two fullbacks loose from secondary. The eyes of those defensive backs are going to get very big. It's a deep backfield for Oklahoma already today. We've seen Rashid, McKinley, Brewer, Lewis, and Williams carry the football. The Sooners on the move, first and ten. Again, Rashid. Down to the 27-yard line. Nearly seven yards on first down for Kenyon Rashid, who suffered a broken bone in his foot last year that limited him to four games. A severe dive where they're sealing everything down inside and leaving the defensive end unblocked. He has to close that a little bit quicker. Stays with Rashid. This time the Longhorn stuffed him at the 25. A gain of only two. It'll set up third down and just more than a yard. Kenyon Rashid is going to get the ball again on the trap. You see number 64 trapping Oscar Giles, but there was nothing there right then. They closed the trap. I think they'll give the ball to tailback here. Try to use the fullback, Mike McKinley or Kenyon Rashid, the lead block right here for the tailback. Seventh play of the drive. Oklahoma three of eight on third down. And they picked up two of their last three. They didn't get it. Joel Brewer driven back. Brian Jones hit him first. Stanley Richard helped drive him back. Fourth down in the yard. In the ball, the tailback deep. But Brian Jones just came up and met the play right here and stopped him from getting the first down. Well, you talk about a tough call right here now. Fourth down. They're going for it. The way they're running the football, I think it's a good decision. But I'll tell you what, you don't like to turn and, and not get points right here. I think I'd pick the field goal right here, but Texas is out of position right here. And the Longhorns have to use a timeout. Texas 7 and Oklahoma 3. Something beyond the ordinary. For them, there is a beer that refreshes like no other. Michelob Dry. Once you've experienced its bold taste with no aftertaste, there's no going back. Imagine a rent-a-car company that offers special delivery right to your door. That's Enterprise. Here, let me help you. And remember,
remember, when you return the car, Enterprise will be glad to drop you home. Enterprise, a special rent-a-car company that gives you special delivery. Uh, I like your shoes, Mr. Madden. Yeah, I knew you'd like them. Warshine Comfort Tech. They're guaranteed comfortable. Guaranteed? Yeah. Oh, could you just sit there? Sit, stand, walk, dance in them for 30 days. If you don't love them, you get your money back. You're really walking on air. Because in Comfort Tech, there's air bubbles right in the sole. And they're made to follow the shape of your foot. Even in big sizes like mine. Hey, that looks great. Thanks, Charlie. Floorshine Comfort Tech. Total comfort or a total refund? Ball to Rasheed on the deer dive to the right side, and I think you'll also see Texas pin. Rasheed, with the second effort, picked up the first down. If he went down where he was hit initially, he was short, but he surged forward to pick up the first down. Down to the sidelines and Kevin. You notice that they're having a little difficulty knocking Kenyon Rasheed off his feet, and that's because his feet are size 15. The guy wears skis out there on the field. He's only 6'1", but he's got size 15 feet. Back up to you, guy. <laughs> Big shoes to fill. And this afternoon, he has filled them rather nicely. Oklahoma with an impressive drive with Cale Gundy at the helm. Gundy hit as he pitched it to Brewer. Brewer close to another first down inside the 15 and down at the 14-yard line. Shane Dronette made the tackle for Texas. What made this play work was it's a counter option by Kale Gundy. He gets hit just before he pitches. He's got to get his head and eyes, and he got the pitch off on James Patton hitting. Watch Stanley Richards. He came underneath too far. He's got so used to making the play on the line of scrimmage, his angle was wrong that particular time. Lance Gunn made the play. Second down for the Sooners. One yard to go for another first down. Rashid has the first down inside the 10, down to the 9. Well, they haven't gone to the pass since Gundy came in, but the running game is moving the ball right down the field. One thing about coaches, there's always the threat of that. They defend ghosts sometimes, and he can throw the football, and that changed the defensive thinking a little bit of Texas. But the one thing he's brought in is a little excitement, and uh, when you have a two-quarterback system, sometimes that can happen when the first quarterback stalls a little bit. All of a sudden, the second quarterback comes in and ignites the team, and that's what's happening right now with Kale Gundy. Just three first downs for Texas, but they lead to 7-3. to 2.17 to play in the half. Gaping hole, Brewer, touchdown, Oklahoma! touchdown run. R.D. Lasher drives through the extra point and Oklahoma is back on top by a score of 10 to 7. It's an isolation play to the right side where you let Kenyon Rashid on the linebacker, Michael Padgett, and then Joel Brewer just broke tackles of Stanley Richards and broke into the end zone. Here's a second look. Watch him break the tackles right here. Something the Oklahoma people talk about. Yards after contact. Yak. That's what they use. There used to be a song, Yakety Yak, by the Coasters. But uh, on the other side of the ball, Texas has yak, yards after the catch. So both of them need to yak yak a little bit today. Texas needs to do a little more yakking. <laughs> They've got to get their offense going. They just have to get some offense going to keep the, the Oklahoma offense off the field. Joel Brewer, his fourth touchdown of the season. A nine-yard run with 2.13 left in the first half. And the Sooners lead for the second time in the game, 10 to 7. 
You saw the Sooner wagon there, those little ponies. When I was coaching against Oklahoma, we hyperventilated a couple of those ponies when we gave up about 50-some points. They used to be big horses until they, they ran around here so much. Now, if I'm not mistaken, when you were the head coach at Kansas, you beat Oklahoma. We did beat them, and uh, it was a great win for us. It gets Barry Switzer, and I've always said, Barry's a gentleman, and uh, really that was a great day uh, for our football team. Barry Switzer is in attendance here at the Cotton Bowl today. Riddell's kickoff, down by Chris Samuels, seven yards deep in the end zone. An impressive drive engineered by Gundy, but all of the plays, all 11 of them, were running plays. The drive covered 58 yards, consumed six minutes and 25 seconds, and Brewer took it in from nine yards. Well, Texas has the kind of offense. They can move the football up the field with 2.13 remaining and two timeouts. They haven't had the ball much. One thing they can't afford to do here is one, two, three kick. Uh, I, I think they'll start off with some kind of little pass over the middle or screen. Texas has gone three plays in punt on each of its last three possessions. Gardeer incomplete. Intended for Keith Cash, the twin brother of number 19, Terry Cash. Keith tried to make a one-handed catch, but couldn't come up with it. Peter Gardier's a little off here early in the ball game. Even the touchdown pass was not a great throw. He was four for eight with one touchdown, but uh, not throwing the ball uh, as well early in the ball game as I'm sure the Texas coaches, Lynn Amity, would like. Looks like he's overstriding a little bit as I watch his, his leg here, and he just didn't get a lot on it. Gardier's just one of his last five. He is not a down-the-field thrower. He relies on the short passes. He's relying on his running ability here. And he's down at the 25-yard line. Reggie Barnes made the tackle for Oklahoma. When you're in a one-back offense, there's a rhythm. If you can get into a rhythm of passing the ball, running the ball, and keeping the defense off balance, uh, you've got it's a great offense. Uh, when you get into a situation like all offenses where you become very predictable and all of a sudden Oklahoma can hone in on what you're doing, you're not going to move the football. They've got to be able to get something better on first down so they're not third and long all the time. On third and five, Gardeer. For Samuels, it's a complete pass, and they're spotting him short of the first down by a half yard, less than a half yard. He's just short of the 30. Clock running, a minute seven left in the first half, and Texas will punch should Oklahoma use a timeout here. Yes, if I was Oklahoma, I would call a timeout right here and make him punt, maybe try to go after the punt, try to block it. And indeed, the Sooners use their second timeout. They have one remaining. Great triple header next Saturday here on ESPN. It starts with a Big Ten battle when top-ranked Michigan faces number 25, Iowa. Then our football game at 4 Eastern time from Knoxville, number 5, Tennessee, takes on Alabama. And the triple header finished off with Florida State ranked number 10 this week at number 6, Auburn. One thing you got to remember, the last punt, Alex Waits had to run for his life, so you know there's been a bad snap in this ball game. Oklahoma can choose to do one of two things right here, either go after him and try to force the other bad snap or try to return, get good field position, try to get three more points on or seven more points before half time. I think they'll go after him and try to block it. Waits a 70-yarder today, not his career long. He has a 76-yarder against Colorado in the past. Otis Taylor from the 30. And down to the 29. A 41-yard punt, the return of minus one. Coming up at halftime, the Rayovac halftime report. Tim Brando with scores and highlights from around the nation on this college football Saturday. I think you'll see Kale Gundy air it out now. I think you'll get a chance to see him throw the football right now and try to get down there in field goal range. One timeout left for Oklahoma. They lead 10 to 7 with 48 seconds left in the first half. The Sooners at their own 29. 
Brewer. Out to the 37. Two yards short of a first down. It's a hurry up offense. A gain of eight, second and two. 33 seconds left. Very difficult to substitute during a two minute offense. Oh, they have too many men on the field. They do. They're waiting for Arthur Guest to get off the field. Brewer picks up the first down. The clock will stop momentarily as they move the chains, and Oklahoma will take advantage of that stop to line up. Try to save that one remaining timeout. Well, last week with three seconds to go, he threw one in the end zone. So he's got uh, 19 seconds in the clock moving. He's got to put the ball up. He's got to throw the ball down the football field. If they're going to try to get some points. Taking too much time. Now oh, that's a penalty right here. It's coming back anyway. Oklahoma had too many men on the field. And they set a receiver off to the wrong sideline. He's not welcome over there. I know there's the sun's over there and the shade's over on Oklahoma, but he's not welcome over there. But it's tough to substitute in two-minute offense. Uh, it's just almost impossible. Well, why would you? Why not That's just leave tough. the same 11 I, men you had out there I think the what they were play? What they're trying to do is run the ball a couple plays there, and he's just going to throw it up now. The, the Hail Mary pass is coming right now. We saw number two, Corey Warren. He was the player who tried to take Asylum along the Texas sideline. <laughs> Both teams are in pretty good shape, but Texas offense really has to get it together at halftime. Oklahoma has to feel good about their offensive performance first half and defense. Oklahoma dominated as far as time of possession and total offense is concerned, but at the half, the Sooners trot off with only a 10-7 lead. Coming up, the Rayovac halftime report with Tim Brennan. I'm Sean McDonough along with Mike Godfrey. We hope you're enjoying today's 85th renewal of the Red River Showdown. The score really doesn't indicate, Mike, how much Oklahoma dominated that first half. Oklahoma has dominated this football game on defense and offense. And if you're David McWilliams in Texas, you got to feel great about the fact you're only three points behind. Statistically, you can see the rushing yardage. It's just out of whack for Texas. Texas has to get something going offensively. And the man who did the talking at halftime, Coach David McWilliams, he's down on the field with our Kevin Kiley. All right, thanks, guys. Coach David McWilliams of Texas, you're down three. What do you have to do here in the second well, half? The big thing is we're not moving the football. We've only had, we've only had about 21 snaps. We made a great drive early, but then it's been three downs and punt. We're leaving our defense on the field too long. You can't give Oklahoma the ball that many times with that kind of field position. We've got to get something going offensively. That last drive, Kale Gundy was in the game. He puts a little different type of pressure on the defense, doesn't he? Well, he does. You can see him loosen up a little bit and looking for the throwing game, but big thing is offensively, we've got to move the ball and keep our defense off the field and quit giving Oklahoma the ball that many opportunities. All right, David, thanks. Good luck second half. Back upstairs to you guys. Thank you, Kevin. Teams are on the field. We are set for second half action. OU had won four in a row in this rivalry until their 28-24 loss to the Longhorns last year. They're trying to get back on the winning track. This rivalry dead even since 1945. Each team has won 21 times and they've played the two times. Well, that's a rivalry. <laughs> that uh, Clemson-Virginia game was not a rivalry, but Virginia, of course, has a great football team this year. Oklahoma will kick off. Brad Riddell doubles as the punter. A good kick with the breeze at his back through the end zone, and Texas gets it on offense for the first time in the second half at their own 20. Texas has to now keep o Oklahoma off balance a little bit. Oklahoma in the first half drew a bead on Texas offensively, and if that's going to happen in the second half, they'll dominate it. Texas is going to have to throw on first down, throw some screens, run some draws, try to run some traps, try to do some different things. Now, they're doing something different right here with the huddle. They lined up all the skilled people behind Gardier and then scattered them. That's a backward pass. Brown did not get back to the line of scrimmage. He lost a yard, perhaps even two, depending upon the spot. Played with four receivers on first down. That's a little slip screen right here where he just tried to get the ball to him, let his blockers get out and develop it. Oklahoma runs so well. You have to throw the ball down the field a little bit more. The football just across the 18-yard line. 
Bill Brown struggled to get back to the 18-yard line. Oklahoma is dominating the line of scrimmage. They're getting penetration. They're getting up the football field on the Texas offensive line. Once you get penetration, watch the Oklahoma defensive line. They're up the field already. There's no place for him to run, Phil Brown. All he sees is red jerseys with different numbers. Leading rusher for Texas in the first half was Peter Gardier, the quarterback, with nine yards rushing. He's looking to throw. And it's too high. Intended for Chris Samuel. Three plays and punt. The theme of the afternoon for the Texas offense. That's not the way you want to start the second half, but now you've got to turn it over to your defense. Oklahoma on the other end is coming with a fresh new quarterback, Cale Gundy, and I look for them to open it up a little bit with some quick passes. We were told we might see Jimmy Saxon, the backup quarterback, regardless of how the game was going for Texas. Do you think the struggle of the Texas offense makes it more likely we'll see him soon? I don't think so. I think right now they'll stay with Peter Gardier. Otis Taylor, the fair catch. And Oklahoma with great field position to start the second half. Gary Gibbs leads 10 to 7, and his offense has the football at its own 48-yard line. Part of the tradition of this Red River showdown, nine national championships between these two teams, six for Oklahoma, three for Texas, 143 All-Americans between the two schools, and four Heisman Trophy winners. Gundy starts the second half at quarterback. Brewer bounced off a couple of tacklers and moved into Longhorn territory. Flagged out at the 45-yard line. It's a face mask, John. Oh, yeah. And a five-yarder. It will give Oklahoma a first down just inside the 40-yard line. Just a sprint draw play. Kenyon Rashid leads on the linebacker. Brian Jones just overruns it. Again, look at the balance by the tailback, Dwell Brewer. And they talk about yardage after contact, and that's what they preach to their running backs. And with those big running backs, they're going to get a lot of yards after contact. Been a relatively penalty free game. Look for a run. Oklahoma has run 17 times on first down and passed just once. McKinley. Didn't appear to have much of a hole, but he picked up yardage inside the 35 and down close to the 32 for a gain of nearly eight. This Texas defense, even though the second half is just beginning, looks tired. When they get more down, you can't keep looking at six foot two twenty-five Mike McKinley, six foot two thirty-eight Kenyon Rashid all day in that big Oklahoma offensive line. You need some help from the Texas offense. This is a key drive for Texas. They, they've got to try to keep them out of the scoring uh, part of this game. Second down three. Brewer. Lunches ahead. Very close to a first down. Again, yards after contact for Oklahoma. A lot of arm tackling by Texas right now. Reaching out, grabbing, and uh, at any time now, Texas is going to have to start blitzing linebackers and start to give a little bit more problem to Oklahoma's offensive line. They try to blitz out of either the secondary or with the linebackers. They're going to measure. You saw the fan. There's really nobody around it. It's not a particularly warm day here at the Cotton Bowl. Pleasant for the fans. The temperature in the low 80s. On the field, it's 92 degrees, and that is warm. Well, the benefit of being the home team here at the Cotton Bowl is, if you notice down here, Oklahoma's in the shade. So their coaches have no problem at all looking at the field. If you look on the other side, the sun is right in the eyes of the coaches in Texas. And it makes it very difficult. Oklahoma is the home team this afternoon, occupying the near sideline. First and ten, just inside the 30th Texas. Brewer urges forward before Anthony Curl could swing him down. Here's Kevin Kiley. Hey, guys, from the field level here, you're talking about the Texas defense. It's obvious that they're playing a lot higher than they did early in the game. The Oklahoma guys, the offensive line, getting underneath them and pushing them back. And, Mike, you're right, they're dominating on the line of scrimmage. Back upstairs. 
Well, they brought a linebacker last play, Kevin. They brought Boone Powell on the, on the stunt, and I think you're going to see more and more of that now. The linebackers bringing the linebackers. Gundy gives to the fullback. McKinley lost the football, but the whistles had sounded. The play down at the 18-yard line where Oklahoma picks up another first down. Sooners on the move to start the second half, trying to build on a 10-7 lead. Brian Jones, James Patton had him by the shirt, but it was Jones, number 60, who had McKinley around the legs. Brian Jones, senior from Lubbock, Texas, in his second year in Austin after two seasons as a member of the UCLA Bruins. Wearing number 60, it's an honor to wear that number at Texas. The legendary Tommy Novus wore it and since his All-American career in the early 60s. Texas generally awards the number 60 to their best linebacker. They get a chance to kill Gundy throw his first pass here. On second and nine, he pitches it to Brewer. Inside the 15, lost the football, but it goes out of bounds. They'll spot Brewer down at the 12. Still four yards. That's Actually, his first spot him at the 14, pardon me. Mike. That's his first pass on the counter option, but it's an option pass to the tailback. And a good job by the fullback, Kenyon Rashid, of blocking. That's right. oh, oh, it back. It's a very key down and distance for Texas defense and Oklahoma's offense. Third down, six yards to go. Unbalanced line to the right. And movement. Jeff Miller, number 57, the left tackle, was starting upfield ahead of the snap. Oklahoma has several junior college players. Jeff Miller's one of them. He's from Bakersfield, Ju Bakersfield Junior College out in California. Ball start offense, five yards. Noise factor in a big rivalry game is tough. The defensive end, number 95, Oscar Giles moved, but he drew Jeff Miller off. Now it's third down and 12. Back at the 19-yard line. 10-7 Oklahoma in the opening moments of the third quarter. Gundy keeps it on the option. He's very close to a first down inside the 10. That was one of the impressive things about Gundy's performance last week against Oklahoma State. He proved he could run the option. You talk about a big play. He stopped on this particular play. Stanley Richards just took the wrong angle again. Tail Gundy has come into this ball game and made things happen. Watch Stanley Richard here. His angle is bad. He got away with some things early. He tries to come underneath and he just can't make the play. He's trying to reach out and make the tackle. Oklahoma is short by inches. I don't think there's any doubt they're going to go for this one. They went the last time and were successful. And I think you'll see the fullback again carry the ball on fourth down. They're or perfect. a quarterback sneak. On fourth down, two for two. A lot of confidence in the running game. Quarterback sneak. It is for the first down. Gundy needed just a couple of inches, and he surged forward for a yard down to the seven. First and goal, Oklahoma at the seven-yard line of Texas. off the field, have the offense move the ball. Oklahoma is keeping the Longhorn defenders on the field. This is the 10th play of the drive upcoming. 
Brewer. Tripped up around the ankles by Tommy Jeter. A short game. Texas brought both linebackers here. A lot of times when you hear a uh, linebacker blitz, and a lot of time it's on the flow of the backs. If the backs come right at them, they're going to blitz and come. If the backs go away from them, they'll shuffle and slide down the line of scrimmage. Texas now has to try to take the line of scrimmage away from Oklahoma some way. They're not able to do it just playing base defense. They've got to commit linebackers. Brewer went off of an injury. He's on his knees along the Oklahoma sideline. Unbalanced line to the right again. McKinley, the fullback, again dropped the football on the carpet, but you can hear the whistle sounding. It's the third time on this possession that the ball has come free from an Oklahoma ball carrier. But every time it's been after the whistle or out of bounds. That came out fast there. Now I think you're looking at one of two things possibly here. The option, which has been very successful for him, or the fade route. Take one of the wide receivers and just head him to the corner and let Kale Gundy throw it up for him. Brewer, and he was favoring his right arm as he ran off the field. When he reached the sideline, he went down on both knees. Now it's third and goal from the six-yard line. 10-7 Oklahoma. 7.54 to play third quarter. Gundy lost the football. Big play right there. Oscar Giles has recovered for David McWilliams and the Texas Longhorn. Has so much success with the option that Gail Gundy is trying to run the trap option to the right side. Here you see him reverse out. Up the field comes the defense again. Anthony Curl made the play, stripped him from the football. Here you see it again. Watch Anthony Curl. Makes him take the ball up inside and then strips him of it. Big turnover. Oscar Giles, number 95, came up with it. Texas trying to pick up a first down. Four consecutive possessions. They've done three plays in punt. Actually five, including their first possession here in the second half. An impressive drive, but Cale Gundy and the Sooners came away empty. You know, sometimes you have a young quarterback who makes some mistakes like that. The last thing you wanted to do is give the ball up. You want to at least come away with three. Second and four. Brown. Appears to have the first down of the 23. Here's Tim Brando. Number one is in doubt, gentlemen. Michigan State's Dan Ennis goes to work on third down to Highland Hickson. Gets away from some trouble, too, in traffic. That ties the game at 14. They have just opened the fourth quarter at Ann Arbor. They're all tied up at 14. Back to the Cotton Bowl. Well, certainly, if that score ends that way, there'll be a new number one. Well, Virginia should be number one anyway. I don't care. I, I believe that a team with a loss this early shouldn't be number one. Virginia's the number one team in the country right now. On first down, Brown managed to make something out of nothing. He crossed the 25 for a gain of about a yard and a half. Well, Sean, as, as long as you have undefeated teams, people complained about Virginia's schedule. Nobody complained about their schedule five years ago. You have Houston, who's undefeated going into today. They're behind. You have Florida, who's undefeated. You have Nebraska. You have Oklahoma. You can't put a team with one loss, I don't think, that early in the season. Now, maybe they are the best team, but they're not right now. Broken play in Peter Gardier. Fortunate to pick up a yard. Well, he lost his fumble early in the game just like this. It's the same thing. Either the ball is not hitting the hands of the quarterback. It's up too high. It looks like he's he's in there. I don't think it's the quarterback's fault. I think it's the center's fault. Watch right here. He comes out. He's, he's not coming out too soon. So I think the center, Todd Smith, is just not hitting the, the palms of the hands where you want the ball. Third down and seven. The first down picked up by Texas on this series, their first since the 10-minute mark of the first quarter. Gardair complete. 
but short of a first down. Chris Samuels to catch at the 32, but he needed to reach the 34. Just a little option route to Chris Samuels. He's got to go up about a yard or two more on that route. It's a five to six yard route, but when you have to go to the sticks on third down, you need to go to the sticks where you're going to get the first down. David McWilliams has no choice right here. He has to punch football. Three game field position. Alex Waits. Got out all of last year with a hamstring injury. This not his best effort. Taylor. A return of six. 10-7. Oklahoma. 447 left in the third quarter. Presentation of college football, Texas at Oklahoma, is brought to you by Dodge for performance, quality, safety, and value. Welcome home, America. And by Mr. Goodrent, the GM service expert at your participating GM dealers. That is a genuine Texas Longhorn on the grounds of the State Fair of Texas. Be a great time to throw the football. On first down, there are 22 runs in one pass. Be an excellent time to put it up. And then he wants to. Flag flies. It's intercepted. Could be interference against Texas. Richard, the interception back to the 40, but hold everything on the flag. Well, the problem on this, Don, is that they make it look like a run. And I think that's probably what the call is going to be, interference on Texas, which could be a backbreaker after this particular play. There was definitely contact with the intended receiver along the near sideline. Holding by the defense, 10 yards, first down. Watch Arthur gets right here. Now, the cornerback, Brady Cabinus, he thinks it's a run, but he's still trying to hold on for dear life. An official got it. it. It's a good call right there. But the play action sometimes when you're playing an option team, Grady was beaten, but he has Stanley Richard right behind him. Now, here's where the Texas defense really has to react. You have a little adversity now where you had the ball and interception. Now, here they come back at you again with that running game, that big fullback. you got to be able to stop him. It had been 25 consecutive running plays before that pass. Rashid. Down to the arms of Shane Dronette. Here's Tim Brando. Sean, Houston has scored 85 points against one team in one game or more. They've only scored 85 in the last seven meetings against Texas A&M. The Aggies lead 24-7 in the second quarter. Darren Lewis has three TD runs, the most recent of which a 47-yarder. So the Aggies, along with the Horns, making the job a little easier in the Southwest Conference for the Cotton Bowl because Houston is ineligible. Back to you, gentlemen. 10-7 Oklahoma. Less than four minutes to play now in the third quarter. Brewer fumbled. And I believe they're calling him down again. Richards thinks Texas has the ball. He's mistaken. And now the Longhorn Rooters are really upset. They might have had a gripe there. They may have. We're going to see it on a replay. Cal Gundy gives the ball off. Duell Brewer. That ball's out before the ball is down. out. Bad, bad call. The, call. the official that made the call is blocked out. They got to reach back again, Texas. Option. Brewer. Driven out of bounds. Short of a first down. Short by a yard. He went out at the 48 of Texas. Brian Jones made the play from his inside linebacker position, keeping him from getting the first down. Oklahoma, Jerry Gibbs will be just satisfied now to punt him in the hole. David McWilliams applauds his defense. These two coaches with amazing similarities in their past. Each played linebacker on the national championship team at his respective schools. Each was a longtime assistant coach and defensive coordinator for becoming the head man. Excellent punting from both sides today. Riddell's kick bounces into the end zone. 2.56 to play in the third quarter. It's Oklahoma 10 and Texas 7. Back at the Cotton Bowl where Oklahoma leads Texas 10 to 7. 
Among the midst of all of the festivities here in Dallas this weekend, the ESPN family has felt great pain as cameraman Garland Wells was killed in an automobile accident on Thursday while he was en route to work on this game. Garland has been with ESPN from the beginning of the network. All of our heartfelt condolences and prayers go out to Garland's friends and family. He was a good friend, and we'll all miss him. First and ten, Texas. Brown. Mike, by the time that he's getting those pitches, he's nine yards behind the line of scrimmage and running sideways. Plenty of time for that Oklahoma defense to pursue. Well, the biggest problem, Sean, is that the Oklahoma defensive line is just manhandling Texas's offensive line and getting penetration. I think one thing that's important right here, Texas has 22 seniors. First time since David McWilliams has been here, he has senior leadership. They've got great confidence. Uh, they're a veteran football team. On the other hand, Oklahoma brought 70 people to this game, travel squad, only 25 defensive players. So their numbers aren't quite up yet. They're still feeling the effects of the sanction controlled by the NCAA. Nice job by Gardeer to get the football to carry cash. First down, nearly a late hit as well. First down, Texas out of the 31. Oklahoma is making Texas work for inches right now. I mean, it is a struggle on, uh, for Texas offense. You really have to, I'm, I'm telling you, from a Texas standpoint, you got to feel good you're even alive in this ballgame. Played very well right here by Tom Backus. He should have made the play on, on Peter Gardier. He just didn't wrap him up. And then he threw the uh, misdirection pass to Kerry Cash. Kerry's had, to, had a good ball game. He just needs to try to get the ball to him a little bit more. 10-7 Oklahoma. Less than 2.20 to play in the third quarter. Brown lost the football. And Oklahoma has recovered. Well, the Longhorn fans aren't cheering. They're wondering where the whistle was. <laughs> I think this was a fumble. There's no doubt about this yes, right was. here. Betsy Barnes, number 40, is the player that recovers. I think he's kind of talking to Coach Selman right there. But as you watch Phil Brown come inside, as I said before, they're just dominating the line of scrimmage. The ball's clearly out and recovered by Reggie Barnes. Again, the, the Texas, yard line. again the Texas defense is going to have to respond. And, of course, Oklahoma needs to punch this one in. Dundee throws for Taylor. He made the catch. Great catch by Otis Taylor at the nine-yard line. Otis Taylor's a former quarterback. He came to, to, to Oklahoma as a quarterback. Excellent hands. The counter option pass. Watch him just reach up there, control it a little bit, then bring it on in. Same kind of uh, pass that Kerry Cash got early. And he's excited. Gail Gundy is very calm as the quarterback. Shows a lot of leadership for a young guy. From the nine, first and goal, Rashid, the fullback, ahead for a yard. And we take down to a minute and a half left in the third quarter. No scoring in this period. Oklahoma continues to enjoy the 10-7 edge they had at the half. I think Larry Coker right now has to be thinking, last time he ran the option, Kel Gundy fumbled it. It was there. But I think what you'll see right now is a tailback, fullback uh, uh, running attack right here. They'll try to get the ball to Duell Brewer and let him follow the block of that big fullback, Kenyon Rashid. At the moment, it's Ike Lewis, the tailback behind Rashid, and he doesn't get far. Perhaps one more, and that's it. Just exactly what I thought they'd come with. Texas the same way. And they stood up Kenyon Rasheed on this. Watch him. Watch Kenyon Rasheed. He has a linebacker to block. Anthony Curl stood him up and brought good pursuit and now forces him into a third down situation. Texas can get out of this and dodge a bullet now. They still had a shot. but uh, This man's been dodging a lot of bullets. He has dodged. Uh, he has a bulletproof vest on the sideline right now. <laughs> I look for Kale Gundy to throw this one. On third and goal from the eighth. He's looking to throw, lobs it up. No chance. The vest worked again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Another bullet off the vest of David McWilliams. The field goal unit comes on for Oklahoma. 
I'm telling you, as many opportunities as Oklahoma's had to only have 10 points, on the other sideline, those the Oklahoma coaches, Gary Gibbs got to just be worried just a little bit, but he's dominating the game, but he's not dominating on the scoreboard. R.D. Lasher from a tough angle from 25 yards. He's one for one today, connected from 47. And he's now eight of 10 for the season. Three points for the Sooners. Their lead is six with 16 seconds left in the third quarter. Tom McDonough with Mike Gottfried and Kevin Kiley at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. The folks from Oklahoma making the most noise at the moment. The Sooners lead 13 to 7 in the final seconds of the third quarter. A kickoff from Brad Riddell. Chris Samuels will bring it out from three yards deep. A good decision as he brought it back across the 25-yard line. The most recent scoring drive for Oklahoma culminates to the 25-yard field goal by R.D. Lasher. Five plays and 28 yards after the Phil Brown fumble. They had it for a minute and 55. Watch the way Texas offense is walking on the field, and their confidence can't be real high right now, but they have to put together a drive they expect to win this game. Now, the Texas coaches told us yesterday when we met with them that Jimmy Saxton was likely to play no matter how the game was going, even if things were going well for the offense. The Texas offense has not played well, but we have not seen young Mr. Saxton. Brown finds running room. And the first down out at the 42-yard line on the final play of the third quarter, a 17-yard gain for the redshirt freshman, Phil Brown. The Sooners take a six-point lead into the final period. Dallas, Texas has been the scene of many memorable battles over the years between Oklahoma and Texas. This has not been a pretty football game, but the stage is set for a dramatic fourth quarter. Dramatic finish here. Neither team has thrown the ball deep down the field yet. Someone has to do that in this ball game and complete a big pass. First and ten for the Longhorn. Brown spins out to the 45 for three yards on first down. It's been a great city. It's a great tradition in Dallas. Of course, the Cowboys with Tom Landry and Tex Schramm and Gil Brandt built a, a dynasty here for many years. And uh, as a college coach, they did things right. Mm -hmm. And they were they were outstanding to, to college football. Texas scored early in the first quarter. Since then, punt, 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 fumble. You know, Lawrence Well, offense, one, two, three, kick. Second and seven. Gardeer has his man. Cash lost the football. Still free. Oklahoma has it. Now the turnovers are killing the Longhorns. That's their third lost fumble. Greg DeQuasey came up with the football for the Sooners. Start back pass to Kerry Cash. He's working right inside the linebacker. Ball's thrown, and the hit was made from Joe Bowden from behind. Costly turnover. Oklahoma's forced a lot of turnovers, and then the other key statistic is they usually score right after the turnover. So now, doubly important for Texas to try to shut them down. Coming into today, 102 of Oklahoma's 200 points this year had come immediately after opposing team turnovers. Mike McKinley, the fullback. Back to the line of scrimmage. A late flag comes in. I think that's on Texas. Might be a face mask. You saw the referee hold up five in a questioning way. Perhaps the difference between a five or a 15-yard face mask. Incidental face mask, five yards, still first down. They keep calling penalties against Texas and not blowing those balls that they may need a bulletproof vest to get out of here, too. It is an SEC crew, neutral officials. Oklahoma 
with a 13 to 7 lead. We played just more than a minute in the fourth quarter. You gonna get a review? <laughs> <laughs> The question is about the down and after what happened last weekend in college football. They're going to make sure they have the right down on the marker on the sideline. Right now it's showing first down. We are playing with four downs here this afternoon. Not five as they have played with elsewhere in college football this year. An unbalanced line this way. They have not run to the unbalanced yet. Mike Lewis, close to the first down. He paid the price for it as he crossed midfield and got stood up at the 48-yard line of Texas. Let's check in on the studio with Tim Brando. Arkansas pummeled last week by TCU and Little Rock. They are losing in Fayetteville to Texas Tech, 28 to 6. Jamie Gill, a couple of touchdowns rushing in the game. Arkansas is a hunted team because they're going to the SEC. Back to you, fellas, at the Cotton Bowl. That'll do it sometimes when you change leagues. I was with Arizona when they went from the whack to the pack. And it was tough the last year. McKinley picked up the first down on second and less than a yard. First down Oklahoma at the 44 of Texas with 12.43 to play in the fourth quarter. And Oklahoma leading 13 to 7. They thought they recovered the ball again over there, Sean. I could see David McWilliams very upset. And the players are very upset. They thought the ball was fumbled again. David McWilliams. This is 23rd Texas OU game as a player, as an assistant coach, and as head coach. He's been involved in 23 of these contests. That ties him with Daryl Royal and Barry Switzer for most Texas OU games participated in. Both of those gentlemen, legendary coaches, here in attendance today. The unbalanced line this way again. They'll come this way. McKinley, the fullback, picked up six on first down. He crossed the 40 and went down to the 38. The unbalanced line is now starting to give Texas a little bit of a problem. The last two times they ran, the previous time they ran to the unbalanced line, the last time they ran it right over the center. Mike McKinley, a nice story today for Oklahoma. He's up to 84 yards rushing. Second and four. 11.45 to play. Lewis. Surges forward for the first down. Where it appeared they had him stopped, it would have been very close to a first down, but that last minute surge picked up the first down for Oklahoma. There is a flag down on the play. I'd say Texas is due. At least they feel like they are. The signal given first down. I think the penalty will now be marked off, so it'll be first and 25. After the play was over. Dead ball foul against the offense. 15 yards be first and 25. Now we're here. This becomes a problem, Sean. A field goal late in the ball game would put them up past a touchdown. Now they got to get back in field goal range. Again, another bullet. Mm -hmm. Lasher, the field goal kicker for Oklahoma, has a very strong leg. But right now they are out of field goal range. Back at the 48 of Texas. This may be the first time we see the long pass today. Dundee. Will run. He went out at the 39-yard line. Nice run by Cale Gundy. Parade All-American in high school last year in Midwest City, Oklahoma. He's a highly recruited quarterback. His brother played at Oklahoma State. Larry Coker, who was the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma State, had his brother and then was hired over here by Gary Gibbs. Now is coaching the younger brother. It's kind of interesting. They went to Oklahoma State to get their offensive coordinator, Larry Coker, who's an outstanding coach. On the other side of the field, Texas went to get Lynn Amity, who had been at A&M, and then went to Florida, so they knew about him in the league. Second down, 16 yards to go for an Oklahoma first down. The delay to Lewis. He got away from Patton and then got smashed down by Stanley Richards. Here's Tim Brendel. 
Michigan State is a team that just has plays happen to them like this week in and week out, Sean and Mike. Take a look. They had just taken the lead, the Spartans 21-14, ensuing kickoff Desmond Howard. 95 yards to kick return. By the way, Virginia may not be number one this coming week, Mike Gottfried, but Michigan holding on to number one may be the best thing that ever happened to college football. A championship format will be tantamount next year, it appears. I think that's coming, Tim. I, I believe that's right around the corner. I said within five years we'd have a national playoff. Third down and long, and Gundy running for his life got away from Dronette. Now he's going to try to run for the first down. He's out of bounds at the 32. Nearly 10 yards short of the first down, but a try for a field goal of 50 yards looms as a possibility. It's a tough decision for Gary Gibbs. You, you can do one of two, three, three things. You kick the field goal, you punt the ball, try to pin him down there, or three, you just go with another offensive play and try to pick the first down. If he's made his decision, he's going for the field goal. Lasher can kick it from this range. He has... A 53-yarder as his career long back in 1987. This a 49-yard try. Blocked. Ta uh, Texas dodges another bullet. They still trail by just six points with 10.05 to play. ESPN's presentation of college football, Texas at Oklahoma, is brought to you by Isuzu. For features, styling, and price, there's no comparison. And by Michelob Dry Beer. Once you experience the bold taste with no aftertaste, there's no going back. We're at the Cotton Bowl on the state fairgrounds of Texas and a big block field goal by the Longhorn. This ball was kicked low and Shane Drenet, number 81, blocked it. When the rule was changed a year ago and they took the tee away from the kicker, almost every coach devised to block the kicks when they had the tee from the outside. Now that they took the tee away that the ball would not get up as high, they're all trying to block it from inside. And that's where Texas got that one. Remarkably, the Longhorns trail by only six. They have been thoroughly outplayed. Phil Brown, the carry on first down. The Longhorns without Adrian Walker today. There was some doubt when the day began as to whether or not he'd be able to play. He's been banged up with a couple of injuries. He's been their leading rusher. Was their leading rusher last year, but he has not seen any action here today. And Brown has had a tough time finding running room. Oklahoma has dominated this football game, but is they're not out of the woods yet. Nine and a half minutes to play. 13 to 7 Oklahoma. Gardeer had the man open but missed him. Cash thought he was interfered with, but he got a shove from behind in the middle of the back. I don't think there's any doubt that there's interference on this particular play. It's just if he just got a hand on him, it's interference. You watch right here, Peter Gardeer is going to throw the slant over here. He pumps it, but the defensive tackle got in his way. We, I tell you, he's nudged. Very cashed by Charles Franks. One that got away. Now they're going to pick up the third down. Oklahoma's going to try to stop him. Third down and five. Gardeer into a crowd and picked off. Fourth turnover by the Texas Longhorns today. Jason Belzer, the interception. That may have been the, uh, the biggest turnover of this football game because they had good field position and just threw into a crowd. Peter Gardier threw into the three receiver side. And just too many defenders over there. Oh, I thought he was going to try to take it down and then run it. But Jason Belzer, he threw it right to it. There's a late flag, and I'm not sure exactly who that's called. It looked like it was on Oklahoma. That would be a break for Texas. The interception, the third of the season by Jason Belzer, the junior from Kansas City, Missouri. He had four interceptions last year. He was over, personal foul on the offense, be first down at 25. Now you talk about a break again. John, when you start first and 25 with a wishbone offense or an option-type offense, it's difficult. So there's a big play. It's not like you to, like to have the exchange with the punt or keep your offense on the field. But again, uh, you still have a shot. Jason Belser right there with a big interception. He was second-team All-Big 8 last year. 
Oklahoma leads 13 to 7. 918 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Sooners at their own 45. Brewer out to the 48 for a gain of three. Texas seems to have a big problem on offense. Obviously they do, Mike, but it looks like part of their problem is caused at least by Gardere's inability to throw the ball downfield. The Texas coaches told us last night he just cannot throw it down the field. I'm surprised neither team has thrown the ball down the field. If nothing else, you throw it as a warning signal to get everybody off of you. Uh, neither one of these football teams has put the ball up over 20, 25 yards in this ball game. Gundy gives to Rashid. First down, or very, no, excuse me, that's the original marker. It was first to 25. He's back to what would have been the original line of scrimmage near the 40-yard line of Texas. But still 10 yards to go for an Oklahoma first down. This is a field goal drive here. Try to get in field goal range for Lasher to give him another shot. It's a big third down play for the Texas defense right here. Wouldn't be a surprise if they try to blitz Gundy a little bit with the linebacker. The Sooners are not in field goal range at the moment. They've run the option out of this set all day. They pitch it back to Brewer, and he's taken down at the 38. It's going to be a punt now. They try to punt Texas in the hole. If you're Oklahoma, you feel very good because if you punt him in the hole, Texas has not moved the ball at all all day. They need to mount one drive to go the length of the field to win this football game. Are they capable of it? I think that's the question right now. Brad Riddell, the punter. Ten men up at the line of scrimmage for Texas. Good kick, high, and a fair catch made by Grady Cavness inside the ten. 13-7, Oklahoma. This has the ball trailing by six with 7-12 to play, but they begin on their own nine. They've got to put it up. They've got to throw the ball down the field. Barry Switzer and Woody Hayes, uh, they'd be proud of this kind of game. This is a bloody your nose football game. Field position is favored Oklahoma. Just one Sooner field goal on the board and missed the second half. Brown. Still on his feet. Strong run out to the 16 for a gain of seven on the first play of the drive for Texas. A delayed draw to Phil Brown. Read his blocks well and worked up the field north and south. Picked up good yardage on first down. Clock becomes a factor, but you've got a lot of time to, to go down the field. Brown again has some lead blocking. Boy, did he take a hit. Chris Wilson came flying across the field to drop Brown. It did appear that Brown picked up the first down at the 20-yard line. Wilson, the junior, from suburban Dallas, playing in his hometown. He's from Richardson, Texas. Because Texas has had so much problem offensively today, they've went now to a two-back offense where they're going to lead block for Phil Brown. It's a toss sweep where he just sees a little crease there, and the, the play was made by Chris Wilson from the inside, the linebacker spot. 6-12 to play. First and 10, Longhorn. Gardner has cash. He bounces off a tackler. Hard to believe he was carrying the football as he was with the way Texas has turned it over today. Here's Tim Brando. Michigan, Michigan State with just over two minutes to play. Tico Duckett is becoming the prolific running back in the Big Ten, surpassing John Vaughn in recent weeks. That makes it 28-21 with just under two minutes to play. We'll keep you abreast, Sean and Mike. Jim, move Virginia up. <laughs> First and 10, Texas at the 33. Brown to the 35. Perhaps just a bit more than that before Joe Bowden and Chris Wilson drove him back. Three yards of carry today for Phil Brown. He 
He's earned every yard he's moved to that football today because he's been hit by that Oklahoma defense. Now he's got a lead blocker, Chris Samuels, ahead of him. He came into today averaging 5.2 yards per carry. Huge hole. True freshman, Butch Padnock. Into Oklahoma territory and down at the 43. One of the most highly recruited players in all of Texas last year from Kirbyville, Butch Hadnot. Number one thing about a freshman like Butch Hadnot coming in the game, he can excite the crowd and get this ball game going back. He's an inside runner. He's 240 pounds. Ran up in there real well, broke some tackles, and got a big play, and uh, Terry Ray made the tackle on him. It's a key drive here now for Texas with the clock becoming a factor. 4.48 remaining, and the clock is running. Each team has all of its timeouts remaining. Had not. Perhaps writing his name into the history books of this storied rivalry. Through freshman in his first Texas OU game, igniting the Longhorn offense in the fourth quarter. Well, he's a load. I'll tell you, he's a big back. They've had their share of big backs at Texas. And Butch had not is coming in here and really running the football. I think Oklahoma picked up a personal foul. Face mask. A five-yard face mask tacked on to the end of the play. One thing to keep in mind, the inability in the red zone by Texas in the past had not may be the guy that they need down here in this area. They've kicked so many field goals when they couldn't get in for a touchdown. They must get in for a touchdown. And this, they can't settle for a field goal. They stay with the hot man, had not. And he's taken down by Wilson. Well, we asked David McWilliams last night, why does your team have so much difficulty scoring inside the 20? That's what he pointed to. He said, we just don't have that big old back who can pick up the yardage when the yardage gets tough to pick up. I see another reason he's had trouble in the red zone this year. He played Penn State, which is an excellent team in the red zone. When you play against Penn State, when you get in the 30-yard line, you're tough. Colorado's a well-coached, tough football team inside the yardage. So they can make a good field goal. First time Texas has been in Oklahoma territory. It's their third possession today. Gardeer throws incomplete. Looking for Kerry Cash. He was well covered on the play by Darnell Walker. That'll bring up third down and eight yards to go for a Longhorn first down at the 25-yard line of Oklahoma with 3.39 left and with the Sooners leading 13-7. You have to consider whether you're in two-down territory or one right now. It's a decision David McWilliams is making right now. I think the ball will go in Hadnot's hands right now. Uh, again, the success they've had with him throwing on second down, I, I understand why they tried to do it in that particular play, but I think you're going to see Hadnot with the ball on this particular play. Third and eight. They brought Brown in. He's going to throw the football. Over the middle, contact. And a flag flies. The official had trouble getting the flag out of his pocket, but he did throw it as the pass was intended for Johnny Walker. And the big question now is whether Gary Gibbs has got a vest on over here because he's got now uh, his backed up against the wall. And uh, right now... Defensive pass interference, first down at the spot of the foul. I think there's clearly interference on that play, Sean. Peter Gardier going back to throw, and uh, Greg DeQuasi broke on the ball just a little bit too soon. Gibbs and the Sooners have controlled the game all afternoon long, but now they're trying to cling to the lead. From the 19 of Oklahoma. A short game for Phil Brown. He got a yard to the 18, and that is all. Oklahoma's very tough inside the 20-yard line defensively because the field is really now closed in on the Texas offense. Bringing an extra DB in the game for pass coverage right now. Took a defensive lineman out, Dr. Land. Tenth play of the drive upcoming. Brown cuts back, bounces off a couple of tacklers, then Bowden throws him down at the 16. 
Gain of two more. Another third and long upcoming for David McWilliams. I don't know what happened to Hadnock. Uh, you know, now they, they've come back in with Bill Brown, and who's a very good runner. And Hadnock had a hot hand. I don't know if maybe if he got hurt on the play before. They did grab his face mask at the end of his most recent carry. We have not seen Bush had not since. You couldn't pay a dollar out there for a roller coaster ride and have the same kind of stomach David McWilliams has got right now. Oklahoma leads by six with just more than two minutes to play. Gardeer incomplete. Looking for Johnny Walker. Darnell Walker had the coverage. Not enough time really to kick the field goal. I don't there. think so. I think you have to go for the fourth down play. That ball, that ball is overthrown. Uh, not a good pass by Peter Gardier. And David McWilliams wants a timeout to think about the fourth down play. Fourth and seven upcoming with Oklahoma leading by six. Oklahoma leads by six with 2.05 remaining. Gary Gibbs sweating it out as Texas has fourth down and seven at the 16-yard line. I like him to try to get the ball to carry cash just for the first down. Get it over that nine and a half yard marker. Gardeer with time. Throws touchdown. the 20 and marking it off. Defensive pass interference, 15 yard previous spot, first down. 
little frustration by David here. But one thing about Kale Gundy is mobility. He's able to get out and escape the, the rush. Let's see what happens here. And he put his left arm on the back. It was, it was small, but it was there. And never a signal from the official about the catch. It was close. Gundy too high and nearly intercepted. Very difficult when you haven't thrown the ball. So all of a sudden, put it out there and throw a, a passing game that you need. But Dale Gundy is capable. Where he is effective, and you know, Larry Coker probably feels very good about the fact that he's so mobile, he may be able to run for some yardage here. They just have to get field goal range is all they have to do. A one-point Longhorn lead with a minute 45 to play. Second and 10 for Oklahoma at the Sooners, 35. Three timeouts left for Oklahoma. That is incomplete. Brought the tight end across. And Kale Gundy threw the ball right on the mark. Man coverage by Texas. Lance Gunn is, is trying to run with Adrian Cooper. He's in pretty good shape. He just got his hand on the ball, and Adrian Cooper almost brought it in. It's been a well-coached football game today on both sides. Uh, this, there's been a lot of strategy in this football game by both these teams. Third and ten. Draw play. Williams stumbling. He picked up only three yards. And Oklahoma uses a timeout. The first one they have expended in the second half. Well, now you're down to fourth down ball. And you're down for third down reflection here along the Texas sideline. That is Stephen Clark, the tight end. It is fourth down. After last week, we've got to check. We've got to keep yes. checking. It's a very important play. As a coach from Oklahoma, just need something now for the first down. Don't try to get it all. Just get the first down. The action continues with a tough act to follow for Ron Franklin and Gary Danielson tonight. Immediately following our ball game, we'll send you to Knoxville, Tennessee, for the number five Volunteers against Steve Spurrier, your surprising ninth-ranked Florida Gators. That's coming up immediately following the conclusion of this Texas OU game. Well, what does Gary Gibbs have in his arsenal on fourth and eight? He's got to throw a route which will get him seven yards. Maybe the tight end over the middle to Adrian Cooper. Just enough to keep the drive alive right here. You talk about an exciting finish now. 131 on the clock. Oklahoma is three for three on fourth down conversions today. Gundy runs away from the trouble. Throws! What a catch! What a catch to keep the drive alive. Ted Long, number three, the junior from Waco, Texas, with the diving catch at the Texas 46. Dale Gundy again, his mobility saves this. He's able to run out. He almost was able to run for the first down, but through to Ted Long coming across. Texas is playing a lot of man coverage right now where you'll get a lot of crossing routes. Rasheed wrapped up by Brian Jones right at the 45-yard line, and Oklahoma uses its second timeout. With a minute 10 remaining in the fourth quarter, Texas leads 14-13. to I'll tell you, Keel Gundy's got ice water in his veins. I'll tell you, he's a, a young guy that's on the field, a big rival game, uh, Texas-Oklahoma. He starts down at the 20-yard line, and he's moving his team methodically. And I like the way he's doing it. He's trapped back there several times. He's able to avoid the rush. Texas has not been able to get to him yet. And that's going to be a key. If they could get to him one time to try to cause him in a long-yard situation, they have a shot to win this football game. And about 10 more yards, and they're in Lasher field goal range. R.D. has a career long of 53. He has a look for a young man who would like another opportunity. He looks surprisingly relaxed in the situation. There is a man not relaxed. No. Gray hair is coming from these kind of games. Second down, nearly 10. Option. Out of bounds, Williams. 
after a gain of one. We got just across the 44. Stops the clock so they don't have to use a timeout. They still have two downs. Not a bad call by Larry Coker right there because Mann caught him sleeping a little bit, playing pass all the way. Mann coverage, run the receiver off and the defensive back, and you get a big play. Now they've got to throw the football to get the first down again. A minute five to play is third down and seven for Oklahoma. Just outside the Texas 43. Watch Adrian Cooper. The pass is caught. Adrian Cooper indeed made the catch, and he's out of bounds now in field goal range at the 35-yard line. Adrian Cooper is 6'6", 260. They ran one across the route. Again, you have man coverage. And when you have man coverage, you run across the routes. Lance Gunn was the player who was running behind him. Good throw by Kale Gundy. They brought him to the last time. He didn't get to him. First down, Sooners at the 35 of Texas. Less than a minute to play. Rashid. We're coming down to the last second field goal right here. Still a long field goal. This puts pressure on Lasher if they're content to run plays like that and make him try from about 50 yards. I wouldn't be a bit surprised they run the ball again to the tailback. They do on the delay. Ike Lewis. Lost the football! Spotted down at the 32. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Timeout called by Oklahoma. The ball came free again. It's spotted down at the 32-yard line. There you see Ike Lewis running and turning, and the ball comes loose late. It's very difficult for us to see it. I think he was down. It's the first time you agree with an official since we... <laughs> I can say this. I think with all the talk about Texas going to the Southeast Conference, perhaps, David McWilliams is probably happy he's not going there. He has to see this officiating crew again. He has not been played. And I think the breaks, if there have been any, have pretty well evened out, although I don't think that man would agree. Third down and six upcoming for Oklahoma at the 31. They are in field goal range, so what do you do? Some kind of quick pass to Adrian Cooper again. If they're going to play man coverage like they are, try to get the ball to tight end. But I think what Oklahoma will try to do right now is set the field goal up in the middle of the field. Get the ball to the tailback, let him hit, hit the middle of the field, set up the field goal. They have one timeout. They no, have they no timeouts not. left. If so they, they do, do that, it. they have to have the field goal unit ready to come on the field. They do not have a timeout to send them out. The scoreboard took that off late, so uh, they've, got to, they've got to throw the football right here. They can't afford to run it. Texas leads 14 to 13, 25 seconds left in the game. Third down and six for Oklahoma at the Longhorn 31. They keep it on the ground with Lewis. He gets to the 29. Here comes the field goal unit without a timeout. Texas guys will lay on that ball as long as they can. That's a tough thing about running it there. That clock winding down, but they're going to get a shot at this one. Fourth down. From 47 yards to win it for Oklahoma. Lasher's kick is no good. supporters and his teammates. Here's the field goal from 47 yards to win it that went wide left. It came down to this and he just hooked it just a little bit to the left and 
the last time when he kicked the field goal, the ball was blocked up the middle, so he probably tried to get a little bit more height on this particular kick. Now let me ask you a question from a coaching standpoint as we look at the reaction of the Longhorns who watched it sail wide. just by to that before the field goal without a timeout. And they ran a play that really looked like it was designed to get the ball in the middle of the field, maybe pick up a couple of yards, then turn the field goal to the Why bother running a play like that where you can't stop the clock, you have to rush the field goal unit out? That was a rushed sequence at the end. Why not spike the ball right in the ground if you want to or throw it away, you're already in field goal range, then there's no rush. Well, I think their whole idea was to get the ball in the middle of the field. That's what they were trying to do and pick up a couple yards, then rush him on. Every day in practice, you practice that, where you get the kicker running out on the field without any timeout. So they practice that. That's something that they've done often. Let's get out of the field. Kevin Kiley's with winning coach David McWilliams. Thank you very much, Sean. David, 23 games against Oklahoma. Is this the biggest one? This is the biggest one because it was the hardest one. I tell you, I didn't know if we were going to be able to win it. We couldn't get much going offensively, and then we make an 89-yard 89, uh, drive. Our defense kept us in it the whole time. The defense played remarkably well. They gave up a lot of yardage. They, they dominated you the whole game, and yet, what's that saying? Whatever it takes? That's right. Whatever it takes, and the score is 14-13. Is Texas back? We're back. <laughs> okay, David McWilliams, back up to you guys. David's record as head coach at Texas now back to the even 500 mark at 19 and 19. But more importantly, he's won two in a row over his arch rival, the Oklahoma Sooners. What a game at the Cotton Bowl. Texas wins it 14 to 13. The Ream most valuable players of the game for Texas, Keith Cash. He caught the winning touchdown pass from Peter Gardier. For Oklahoma, linebacker Joe Bowden, the junior from Mesquite, Texas. He was in on nine tackles for the Sooners. Again, our final score, Texas 14 and Oklahoma 13. For Mike Godfrey and Kevin Kiley, Sean McDonough saying so long from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas.